In this video today, I'm going to be showing you all how to convert VHDX files over to QCAV2 files. And for most of you, you're probably doing this in order to prevent system corruption when using Windows 10 with UTM, or there may be some other reason. The first step is installing Homebrew, which can be installed with a simple terminal command from their website, brew.sh. Just click on the clipboard icon right next to the install homebrew command line, then command space, and then type in terminal to open up the terminal. Once in terminal, just command V to paste the install homebrew command and then press enter. Then put in your login password. Then press enter once again to continue the installation. If the installation was successful, it'll say next steps and you'll have a percent mark with a typing symbol after it. Next, you're gonna to wanna to drag from echo over to the East quotation mark here and then do command C to copy and then click down after the percent mark and then do command V and then press enter. You've now added Homebrew to your main path in your library. Now that we've successfully installed Homebrew, we can run some commands which will allow us to convert the VHDX file over to QCAV2. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna install the conversion software. So just type brew install QAMU and then press enter. Once the brew command has finished downloading, you'll see a percent mark with the typing line right after it again. And you've now successfully installed Homebrew and the conversion software. You can now convert our files. The first step is to CD into the folder where you have the file stored. And it's pretty easy to find your paths. All you have to do, say if your file's in your desktop, just type users. And then like your home username, which can be found in the sidebar. For me, it's just Jack. And then if it's in your desktop folder, just type desktop. Or if it's in your downloads, just type downloads. And if it's within a folder in the desktop, then just type desktop and then just type folder. And you're now gonna be inside that folder. And this will make the conversion much easier because now we won't have to use the paths of the files. We can just use the names. So to convert the files, simply just type qmu slash img convert. And then inside that folder, just look for the name of the VHDX file. And then just type the name of the VHDX file. And then make sure you add VHDX to the end of it. Space. Then type in the same name again of the VHDX file. Dot. And then you're going to want to type what you're converting it to. And for us, we're converting it to QCAT2. Then simply just press enter. And then it's probably going to ask for permission to access that folder if you've never done this before. Just press OK. And after about a moment or so, it'll finish converting over. And you'll see another percent mark with a typing mark after it. And one last thing I want to point out is that macOS is going to report the uncompressed file size in Finder, but in reality, it's actually only taking up the compressed amount of space, which will be 9.7 gigabytes, compared to the uncompressed 70 gigs that this file is saying it takes up. So thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll have everything down below, including the links, and I hope to see you all again soon.